Hello everyone. This video is about the concept which is based on the first chapter of Science 2, that is 10 standard students. That is heredity and evolution. The name of the concept is theory of evolution. Now, the important concept for the students from the point of view of exam is the evidences, which is covering almost three to four pages of the chapter and which includes seven important points. So we are going to cover the all seven points in this video. That is the evidences given by Charles Darwin to prove his theory of evolution. In short, I'll make you understand what is theory of evolution. I have even uploaded one of the video earlier, which is on evolution. So you can check that video also. What is theory of evolution in one line given by Charles Darwin? He said that the first living creature who ever existed on the earth that was inside the water and that was amoeba, a single cell creature. And we have derived or all the species which exist on earth now have derived from that single creature amoeba. Now it becomes difficult to believe that how we have come from amoeba, how a blue whale, how an ant, how dogs have come from amoeba. So the answer lies here that the theory of evolution has taken 3.5 billion years that is 350 crores years and due to minor changes now we have thousands of species who exist on earth now that time this theory was questioned by many scientists so charles darwin gave certain evidences seven evidences to be exact to support his theory and because of this evidences now his theory is accepted worldwide Let's go through all the evidences, which is also one of the answer for you and for the rest of the people to understand what is common between us, a blue whale, a dog, an ant, an amoeba and the every living creature who exists on earth. If we think it logically, there is nothing common. There is nothing common between us and amoeba and a blue whale. But we are going to go through all the evidences now. Oh, the first evidence. Every living organism, however small, however big it might be, which exists on earth, is made up of cells. And even we carry out same life processes. That is the first evidence for us. Every living organism is made up of cells and we carry out same life processes. That is, for example, reproduction, respiration, digestion, we are carrying out and every living organism who exists on earth. So that is the first thing common between us. Second, second is morphological evidence. Morphology means I want you all to keep the names of the evidence in mind. Rest everything I am going to explain in detail. Morphology means structure. If I talk about any living creature, the body, the body structure is almost different. Body size is different. But the body pattern which is there, that is almost exactly same. For example, two eyes, one nose, two ears, all these parts are same in every living creature. Not only that, the position of eyes and nose, eyes up and nose down. It might be any living creature, but we have the position of the organs same exact. If we talk, talk about plants, there are grasses, there are herbs, there are tall trees. But all plants consist of stem, roots, leaves, fruit or flower. The parts of the plant is same even though the size might be different. So the body structure of any living creature or the plants is exactly same. So this is the second thing which is common between us. Third is anatomical evidence. If I talk about, if I talk about a human hand, a cat's leg, a bird's wings or a flipper of a whale, I'm talking about different parts of different creature carrying out different function, but all parts are made up of bones. Definitely all parts are made up of bone. Even if I talk about any parts of any living creature carrying out any function, not only that, every living creature, the bones which are present, they even have joints in their bones and 
the tissue which is joining two bones together that is ligament that is also present in every living creature in almost every living creature so that is the third thing common between us fourth fourth evidence is vestigial organs now what are vestigial organs organs which are present in some living creature in that creature it is totally beneficial but same organs are present in other different living creature no connection between them but in that creature that organs are non functional of no use for example tail bone tail bone is present in monkeys and tail bone is present in us also that is why they say we have derived from monkeys but in monkeys there is a tail for them it is beneficial we are not having tail so the tail bone is of no use appendix second example of vestigial organs appendix appendix is the extended part of large intestine and everyone knows everyone have the idea that people human beings even do surgery of appendix it becomes painful when it increases in size but same appendix in ruminants for example cows it is useful for them because they take all the food inside undigested food and then sit at one place and remove all the food part by part and then chew and digest it again this is useful for them because they are having a larger appendix the same organ appendix in us it is of no use the next one is paleontological evidence paleontology means a group of science which deals with excavation of fossils excavation means digging inside the earth crust and fossils means remains of dead plants and animal see the whole logic for thousands of years the animals which are dead into the forest what will happen the bacterias will eat the flesh and bones will remain as it is now the soil will start accumulating over the bones and the bones will go down and down deep inside the earth crust the whole logic is if i start digging deep inside the earth crust the bones which are found down underneath in the bottom level those living creature have come first the bones which i find at the top they have died now only this is the whole logic so when they start digging deep inside the earth crust the bones of what were found earlier the remains of what was found earlier that was you have to keep this order in mind that who came first and after that what are, what are the next steps the invertebrates came first invertebrates means those who are not having a vertebral column a spinal cord for example starfish snail earthworm invertebrates came first second were second way the aquatic fishes the third were amphibians those who stay on land also and water also the fourth one the reptiles the fifth one terrestrial and next is apes and the last is mammals and then us we are also mammals right now who are mammals for all those students who don't know mammals are those who are having mammary gland that is milk producing gland so what is the order invertebrates then aquatic then amphibians then reptiles then terrestrial apes and mammals so the invertebrates were the one who came first next evidence we are having that is embryological evidence first i'll tell you what is embryo when male and female gamete fuse together a zygote is formed in the mother's womb and zygote develops to form embryo so that is the whole logic of embryo when i say mother's womb i am not only talking about humans here i am talking about every living creature a point is embryo in the first stage of any living creature it might be cow turtle salamander fish or human being embryo in the first stage of any living creature it looks almost identical similar even though it is of different creature so that is a common thing between us and every living creature six evidence last evidence is 
connecting links. Now, what are connecting links? Connecting links are those organisms who are connecting two organisms of totally different group. I'll give example. A lungfish. It is there in your textbook also. A lungfish. Fishes respire through gills. Definitely everyone has the idea about it. Fishes respire through gills. But lungfish is a fish which respire through lungs like mammals, like us. So that lungfish is a connecting link between fishes and mammals. If we talk about mammals and fishes, totally two different creature. But this lungfish is connecting both the creature. The next is duckbill platypus. You can see the picture of it onto the internet or into your textbook also. Duckbill platypus. Duckbill lay eggs. So definitely it belongs to oviparis. But it is having a mammary gland also. That is milk producing gland. So it belongs to mammals. And none of the mammals lay eggs. See the logic. Duckbill lay eggs and is having a mammary gland also. So it is a connecting link between oviparis and mammals which are two differently groups of two different creatures. The last is, the last example of connecting link is Peripetus. Peripetus is a creature who is having segmented body like annelids. Annelids means you can imagine earthworm. Is it clear? We are having peripetus who is having segmented body like annelids means you can imagine earthworm and is having a tracheal respiratory system like arthropods. When you imagine arthropods, imagine cockroach. So peripet when we imagine earthworm and cockroach, two different creatures, no connection between them, but this peripetus is having segmented body like the earthworm, annelids, and is having tracheal respiratory system like the arthropods, that is cockroach. So it is connecting two different creature, which if we think about, there is nothing common in that. So the evidences which we have covered, all these evidences, that is first about the cell and the life process, which is common between us. Second was morphology, the structure. Third was anatomical evidence about the bones. Fourth was vestigial organs. The fifth was paleontological evidence, excavation of fossils. Sixth was embryological evidence in which in the first stage all embryos look identical of any living creature. And last was connecting links. All these evidences given by Charles Darwin prove that if we think there is nothing common between us and the creatures which exist on earth, uh, but, uh, which exist on earth, but this evidence is prove that there is common between us and every living organism which exists on earth. There are many things in common and we have derived from a common ancestor. That is why the theory of evolution given by Charles Darwin is universally accepted. Definitely, I hope you all have liked this video. You can go through this video during your test or exam time so that it can help you all to score good marks. Till then, see you with the next video. Thank you.